G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Outback Adventures and welcome to part three of our Goodbye Camper Hello Caravan series. And just a quick recap, um, you saw the, the caravan then we, when we bought it, I showed you around it in part one. Part two was where the extended drawbar needed some work, we needed to cut the old one out and we needed to mount the quad bike frame and the gas bottle. Now in this episode, we're going to look at the suspension and we need to put a bigger we'd like to put a bigger wheel in to get the and get the van off the ground a little bit more gives a bit more ground clearance and as well as fitting a bigger wheel we also want to upgrade the suspension uh, to increase the load carrying capacity we want to get it up to two ton so that's going to involve a new axle new set of springs 12 inch electric brakes um, so that's that's the process we're going to go through today so what we need to do on the advice of the um, trailer parts people is to lift the whole van up four inches and then we can drop the old suspension out, measure what size tyre we can get in the guard and then work backwards from there. So stick around and, and we'll, I'll show you once it's up in the air what we're going to be doing. Now this is our two tonne 89 inch axle and it's got <laughs> rather heavy duty nut on the end and this is one solid 50mm uh, axle, square shape and we've got to go with it, these are the fish plates that go underneath that clamp between this axle and the springs there are four U-bolts, we've got the spring hangers for the back of the spring and the shackle for the front and these are our pins that have uh, grease nipples in them so we can make sure they're greased all the time these are our two ton springs and they're a fairly meaty piece of gear. In here we have the electric brake units, a uh, big magnet on the bottom, it's got a mechanical uh, handbrake lever around the back here that we can connect to our uh, handbrake on the tow hitch. And these are our 12 inch drums and these are six stud 139.7 PCD which is the distance between the opposite studs and that's uh, typical six stud Land Cruiser, Prado, Nissan Patrol, those sort of things. Um, bearing set here, the seal, the back bearing, the front bearing and the, the split pin that goes in the assembly. So, And these are the bolts that hold the backing plate on. And these are wheel nuts but we're going to use mag wheel nuts because they're using mag wheels. So these are all the bits as you can see on the table here that have to go underneath the caravan and the first thing we need to do is to remove the old suspension so that's what we'll get on and do now well this is the first of the uh, original suspension component removed it was quite easy easy than I thought actually these two arms have got a bolt through each leg and up there there's a bracket and the spring hanger sat or sorry this the spring the ends of the spring sat in these with a bolt and this is meant to pivot well that one does but this one he's frozen solid so that suspension wasn't probably working too well on the movement so anyway i've also marked the center line here which is the center line of the wheel arch and also the axle so that's my reference point now to go to the other side and move the other one and i will have to cut these off because even though the new spring shackles will go further back. You don't want this daggy bit here, so I'll, I'll have to cut this off uh, here and, and take this one off as well, cut these little straps off and pull that whole piece out. Now the suspension components have been removed from both sides. I'm now going to tackle this wheel arch. Now, as you can see, I've sort of roughly marked out where I think I've got to cut it. Um, I'll just show you, this is the tyre that's going to go in there. So that's that's the that's the tire. Let me get back a bit. Okay, so that's the wheel that's going to go in there, and as you can see, it's hitting this corner, and it's also hitting the front. So what I've got, I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is in here, I've got this lip in here. So that's the wheel arch, that's the chassis rail, that's the outer chassis rail here, and that's this wheel arch here. So there. <laughs> So I'm going to start by, I've, I've transposed that inside corner to here. So I've just got to come up in a bit of a radius 
then from that point radius up to there I don't want to go interfering with that overlap and I don't need to anyway because that measurement there is the inside height of the of the arch so I'm thinking I either take it with a grinder or gently with a, a reciprocating saw I mean the panels about inch and a half thick in here so I've just got to probably just go slowly at it take this molding out all right and I'll see how I go trying to cut that now I've made a cut to the guard and I've just sat the wheel in it's about where it's going to sit so it just it does clear this at the moment don't forget this van hasn't been lifted up and hasn't had the suspension fitted so that's sort of what I'm doing first is trying to work out where the tire will fit and then we'll worry about how much clearance we need to give it or how far we've got to lift it. Uh, I can probably take a little bit more off here. Inside is, is the, the wheel arch. So yeah, not bad for a first try. I will just need to clean that up a little bit and I'll need to work on the other side as well. So that's, that's not quite in the middle. It keeps rolling on me. So that's about how it's sort of looking at the moment, which is not too bad. I've trimmed the wheel arch and what I've done is I've taken the, after a bit of mucking around, decided to take the inside edge of the guard flush with this edge because it was silly having the lip here. So the next thing, uh, freaking dogs are barking. So now that I've cut the first one, what I did was I made myself a wooden template. So it fits in there nicely and I marked the centre point. So what I've done is I've now taken this template and I've transposed it onto the other side, marked it, cut it. So now I've got both guards cut the same and I'll just roll this wheel back in if I can get it in there and show you. This is, as I said, this is without lifting it. This is just to give me some clearance. So I've got clearance on the back clearance on the front at the moment and this clearance here is probably a couple of inches and now that we know we can get the tire in what I'm going to need to do now is excuse the noise of the rain we're going to have to put some sort of lip on here both outside and inside so I've got to come up with some design here that goes around here I'll probably put a flare on it but I just need something to fill in this because now I've cut this open I've got an open hole here so that's the next thing I'm going to work on and I'm not quite sure what it's going to look like yet. Now this is the metal strap that I've made that fits. It'll come up here and it covers either side of this and I'll be able to squeeze it in to hold it secure. Secure it underneath and the same on the front here and it'll secure under here. What I'm going to do is fill all these gaps with um, Sikaflex 227 which is the one recommended as a body filler sealer and that will give me that'll give me the, the desired uh, sealing up here and able to hold all this together and this strap has these little tabs on it and I'm securing it in place on the inside and outside using four mil pop rivets so what I've done here is I've laid out on my welding bench I've just used this piece of box sections tube as a reference point for ref I guess it's the under represent the underside of the chassis I've mounted the first the, the front spring hanger I've laid the spring down here and I've set the geometry up with this back shackle clamped everything down and I'm using this piece of 50 by 50 box tube to represent the box the, the square axle so what I've done is I've used some squares so I've marked off the center point of this with reference to here and that red that little red mark there represents the center of the axle if the axle was above the spring then I've positioned it below the spring and I've used this other reference point here so what it's given me is I can now see how much room I have from from the axle center point to what this would be representing the underside of the chassis on the van then I've worked out I know how much clearance I've got inside the wheel arch and in this configuration 
with the tyre, I'll have 155 mm clearance between the top of the tyre and the underside of the wheel arch, mudguard, we're going to call it, and that's without any load on the spring. So the trailer people seem to think these springs will probably compress about 50 mil under full two ton load. So that gives me 100 mil of clearance, which is probably enough. Um, we are going to go off road and we probably have a little bit of travel through some uneven ground. The other option was to position the axle underneath the spring and, and basically I can do it here without one handed. So that's the little block. So put that there and then put the axle in there. Now when I do the same measurement, I end up with, because we've lifted everything so much higher, I end up with 285 mils of clearance between the top of the tyre and the underside of the wheel arch. Now that's probably a bit too much. So the compromise position is to add another 50 mil of clearance. So by using a piece of 50 by 50 box and welding it to the underside of the chassis and make it longer than the actual spring assembly I'm going to take that 155 up to 205 mil of clearance once the van is sitting on the tyres on the springs those springs will come back so I'll end up with around about 6 inches of clearance I've checked my big caravan and it's got a very similar clearance so I think I'll go that way the axle will be above the spring and I'll use a 50 mil box section under the chassis and I'll just check underneath how much room I've got but I'll probably make, I think the centre from this pin to the back shackle is approximately 940 so if I add 50% of that length I can probably put you know, 300 either side of this point so it's not loading right on that point where this extra box will weld to the chassis so probably end up with about 1500 mil of box section either side and I'll just measure under there and check that dimension first and then I can cut and weld that box in place and what we can also do is we'll use our reference point here as the center point of the axle and we'll probably roll it forward a little bit because they suggest that any movement of the spring is going to push the wheel back a bit so I'll probably give myself 15 or 20 mil forward of the center line of the axle because as I said any movement on this shackle will actually make that spring back a bit which will pull the axle back so that's the next thing to do is to measure underneath see how long that box section has got to be cut it weld it in place and then we'll be able to put these spring hangers on now I've gone and cut myself a piece of 50 by 50 by 3 box section I've made it 1600 long and what I need to do now is transpose those measurements from before that I drew on the on the bench for the hangers now the front one is 300 mil from the front edge and then I've worked everything backwards from there so I've got my center line this is the second of the hangers and if I can I think I've lost it here it is all right so this one will go here, the back side here is the critical dimension, it's 1,005 mil to this back point from the outside edge of, of this one. And it's also important that we get it square and we also need to get it central because this bracket is 85 mil wide and this is only 50. So we need to make sure we don't get them crooked. So what I can do is I can tack these in place, get them, just double check to make sure they're right then I can weld them and then we can well weld the other one and then we can position it under the chassis of the van knowing that this is the center line of the axle it's not the center line of the piece of tube it's the center line of the axle and then when we position it against the center of the wheel arch we'll move it forward 20 mil as I said before the, the hinge and the wheel will want to go backwards as it loads so that's what I've got to do now weld all these up and these are the two rails, the spring hangers welded to them and they're now ready to go under the caravan. So the only thing to do now is just to mark the van where it goes, move the centre line of the axle forward 20mm in relation to the middle of the wheel arch, then I can lift these up and I can stitch weld them to the chassis 
I've just got to clean a spot on the on the corners to where I'm going to weld them. So that'll be tomorrow's job. So I've got the first of these uh, shackle hanger assemblies lined up, jacked up into place, marked it. Um, as I said before, I've added 20 mil, so I've brought the whole thing forward. So this is sitting here on stands, jacks, I've squared it, and now I can finally weld it in. And both sides are now in, and they've had a coat of paint, and I've painted the um, wheel arch, and I've painted around the edge just to cover that lip. And I've got what will go on shortly, I've got these flares, just because the tie is going to stick out a little tiny bit. All right, I'll just show you the other parts. Now I've painted the axle, I've painted these spacer plates for the axle, uh, the fish plates that go again, with the U-bolts under the springs and the U-bolts there. So getting exciting now, it's time now to put it all together and we'll start by putting the springs and shackles together. Now I just want to mention these pins. Now these are greasable shackle pins and they have a, a grease hole comes out the end. What I've done is I've marked with a white marker where the hole is because the, it was suggested not to put the hole at the bottom so the hole, because the way the spring would sit on the pin, you're actually going to squash that hole and stop the grease coming out. So I'm going to put the white mark, which is the grease hole, horizontal, and that's the way I'm going to assemble the whole lot. So, all right, I'm going to get on and put that in now. And the springs are in, and the axle's in, the U-bolts are done up, and the next thing to do will be to put these uh, electric brake backing plates on and they have a, a left side and a right side and I'll just show you the difference there basically the, the way the handbrake lever operates can only go on one way because the cable's got to pull it forward so if you were in doubt that's how you'd make sure you got the right one but uh, yeah just looking at that this is pretty low to the ground this van's got to come up a long way to get that big wheel under there but that will, that's what I was aiming for give me some ground clearance so uh, let's get these backing plates out and this backing plate on the back says, uh, there, says right side. And as I said, you can see with this brake lever, that's got to pull forward. So that's where the mechanical handbrake is. So this has to be this side. I'll be careful I don't damage the cables here, the wires, sorry. All right. Okay, so that's going to go on there, I'll put some bolts in it and I'll put the other side on and that's the backing plates on I won't worry about wiring up the electric brakes yet I haven't done the electrics for the lights and all that yet so that'll be that'll be later so really next thing to do is to put the hubs on the front I'll need to pack the bearings put the seal in the back pack the, the pack the bearings put the hub on and then I need to lift this whole jobby up a bit because it's, um, I know it's going to take a bit to lift it up. It's already up on four stands. I have to be very careful with it. So I'll go ahead and do the hubs. And when I've got the hubs on and I've got the thing jacked up, I'll show you how it looks with the wheels on it. Here is the van with its new suspension in it. As you can see, it's a lot higher than it was before. In actual fact, we've lifted it 200 millimeters uh, from its original uh, sitting in the, on the shed floor. And we've got the 16 inch wheels on it. We've got 245 70R16 light truck tires on it. You've seen we've cut the guard, we've put the flare on. Uh, and underneath, I'll just show you underneath how that's all looking now that we finished it. Well, this is what it looks like from underneath. It's a lot more room under here than I had before. Um, you've seen all the components, the springs, there's the new axle, 
and the new spring on the other side you can see the 50 by 50 box I've put in there so yeah really really pleased with the way it's come out and this is how the wheel arch looks how it's come out with the flare on the on the top of it really pleased with that um, yeah, obviously and you saw the modifications we did to get the wheel in we've got plenty of room in there we've got a couple of inches of room in here same on the back plenty of room for all that to move and we've got a lot of distance here we've got about 170 mil final clearance with the with the van sitting on the ground so really pleased with the way it's looking all right so that brings us to the end of this video this is part three um, with the suspension upgrade all done and if you like the video a thumbs up would be appreciated if there's something you don't like about the video and you want to give it a thumbs down i'd appreciate you putting in the comments below what it was you didn't like because i'm always keen to learn how to make better content and better videos um, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel subscribe button will be down here and if you haven't already seen the video series so far i'll put a link up here to the playlist and be able to go back and watch those just finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to the guys at uh, Southwest Trailer Parts in Mandra. Uh, Steve and Rob have been really, really helpful with making sure I got the right parts, some advice on how to set things up. It was Rob's um, drawing on a bit of paper that showed me how to set the spring up initially, so then I could follow that, and I appreciate his help. Um, so that's it for this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.